Um, is there any way that as a law team, as a class action suit, that we can overturn that? Because I can prove that my bloodline goes before 1860. We've had that land, this land she's talking about, we've had it in our family to this very day. And that supersedes this 1868 and all that. That we have, I mean, as our, my DNA goes beyond that. And so is there any way that as a law team, can overturn that case so that we can establish our own water rights as you know as the landowners and that we don't have to be forced to have uh, the tribes or the federal government or whatever tell us what to do because water is valuable we need it to live it's not something that we can do without our bodies need it to live it's that valuable <coughs> The short answer is the bungalow on March 8th. Yeah. The longer answer is they're all different size hammers in the in the tribal and federal government. Powers is a kind of high but not absolute hammer. The hammer that's above that is Lone Wolf versus Hitchcock, the plenary power of Congress, and Congress has spoken in this particular water compact, and this is the last word. You get the last word to decide what your future and the future for your children is going to be. So, powers is on the books, and the people that wrote the compact knew it was on the books, but they used a bigger hammer in that compact than powers to make it come out the way they've made it to come out. Thank you. Um, I just realized it's 9.15 already, everybody. I'm sorry. Um, let me quickly run through the cards, and then we have one more hand here. Okay, why don't you go first, and then I'll go I through the cards. I to issue this question to you. I uh, had a, a charge brought against me. Eminent Domain. It was an electrical company that wanted to go through my property. I had the right to say no, because I already got that answer. I said, no, you can go around my property. So I took it to Max Bacchus. I asked him if they could actually do this to me. And under the eminent domain, condemnation lawsuit against me. And <coughs> I got a letter, a response, through the help of Max Bacchus, that told me in this letter, and it was signed by William Mercer, the Attorney General for the United States of America, Montana. He wrote on there that therefore this letter, and I've got it, it's in my possession, that they had to protect my rights and my property. Therefore, they notified that electrical company that they couldn't condemn my property under eminent domain. That would be a breach of trusteeship, I know. That was given to me. It's a legal document. Okay. And the question, how would you Is like there any way in the world that we could bring a lawsuit against the federal government, the United States federal government, for letting this happen if it goes through? A breach of trust, then. Breach of trust is yeah. basically what I think uh, the yeah. question is. That, that last part is <coughs> the one that threw the curve. If it goes through, it goes through. The, the game's over. Okay. If it goes the waivers, through. Yeah. yeah, the waiver and release clause, which you've agreed to by voting in favor of the compact, releases all claims. For all, all rights and claims. Yeah, connected with the water compact and, and, and its force and effect. <coughs> And so you're lucky to get some help from Bacchus and lucky to get a straight answer out of Mercer. Yes. And um, uh, the eminent domain, uh, domain issues are, are troublesome and most of us have had those issues. I've had them on my property with uh, the electrical company here in Crow. And uh, I decided to uh, let them put their fiber optic cable on the property and, and uh, not fight it. But, you didn't want it, and you were We don't need it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Here's, 
I'm going to finish up the cards really quickly. If the compact passes, what do you think our, our uh, it says our reservation, I think it probably means what does our, our sovereignty look like after we've uh, waived our claims, waived all claims. I think you've already really, yeah. you've just, is the questioner satisfied that? It was waived. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah okay. Yeah. So it's waived. It's okay. Thank you. Um, Bill Eggers stated that we can stall talks. If so, then why did the State Reserve Compact Commission set a sunset date to negotiate of July 1, 2013? Sunset dates are set in most pieces of legislation that if the goal of the legislation is not accomplished, it dies, it self-terminates. So, I don't know, Bill Yellowtail here has been in the, in the House, and he knows as well as I do that unless the legislature renews the interest, and in, in, in fact, I was part of the uh, uh, effort in the uh, House Appropriations Subcommittee where the House was going to cut off the interest on the $15 million that the state agreed to pay the Crow tribe for its share of the water compact. And I objected to that. Even though I was against the compact, I didn't want the interest to be cut off. And so I had a real struggle with these fellows in the subcommittee where they almost threw me out. But they denied the motion to cut off the interest rate. Now what is it, $18, $19 million? I don't know. That Total figure. So it's been accumulating while we've been discussing the compact and negotiating it. Okay. Thank you. Last part. Would allottees still have to get a permit from the tribe even when the allottee uh, has reserved their water right? I think that means that for the claim, the, file the claim. The, for the the allottees who file the claim. Would they still have to go to the tribe to uh, to secure a water a water allocation? My understanding is that when you sign, like we've been discussing, you waive uh, your uh, you, you waive your 1868 date goodbye, and you essentially become a 1999 priority date, and so then you have to go through the tribal water right department and just you know you have to follow that but if you vote no then you have more options okay wait i think you might have missed the point of the oh, question I might have the question was for a lot tees that uh, <coughs> filed a claim back oh, in the oh, 70s oh, oh, oh. Yeah. under the state system would they still have to go to the my tribe? understanding is no because okay. they've they've already filed right. so they're already good to go okay good all right well look i i know there are lots of questions uh still but we've gone way beyond our time and i'm going to break i'll tell you what we'll invite uh, or if these guys want to stay a little longer they can but we've we've advertised for nine o'clock uh Ms. Graff would like to. I was just this one question. I was not too sure because somebody left the room. The, oh. When you said, I think that person meant sovereignty instead of what's our okay. If that person is still in the room who asked the question, maybe that could be verified because I don't know if that Okay, what would our reservation be like? Here's the question. I, I did a little uh, editorial, a little editorial license here that I should If the compact passes, what do you think our reservation looks like after we've released uh, uh, our all claims? The very, the very quick answer to that is it's going to look like a mess because if we have any water claims and disputes, we're going to have to go to the state water court and we're going to have to decide, get the uh, state water referee or the state water master uh, to decide uh, what, who, who is right. And that will then initiate conflicts between pro and pro and pro and non.